He started as a matinee idol in the 30s, became a character actor in the 40s, and then he mastered horror. Dungeons, dead bodies, skeletons, weird science experiments, bubbling cauldrons. These were Vincent Price's accessories, something he felt quite comfortable around, a character actor who became a character. One raise of his eyebrow, and you knew you were about to be thrilled by a debonair, evil, yet sympathetic villain. I always loved the bad guys in movies. They had the best parts. I'm going to give the people what they want. Sensation, horror, shock. The first time I ever saw him on screen was at Baltimore Senator Theater in the House of Wax. I was just a kid, but the melting figures, the mass covering his burns, stealing bodies from the morgue. This all shocked me and inspired my career. Vincent Price was perverse, yes, but he could rob a graveyard, and you thought, well, if Vincent Price is doing it, there must be a good reason for it. As soon as you heard his voice, you had to stop and listen. I think everyone wonders what they would do if they saw a ghost. Even in his earliest movies, his voice was instantly recognizable. You order the guard against my wishes? I have to, Your Grace. They wait only for a signal from you. Which I'll never give. He could read the call sheet for any film, and it would sound scary or suspenseful. Are you ready, dear? Sexy, elegant, smart, and a little bit evil. The very best kind of voice you can have. Suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. I actually prayed I would wake up and be Vincent Price. I think you all remember the bargain we made about staying all night. $10,000 a piece. A few years later, watching William Castle's house on Haunted Hill, a skeleton emerged from a vat of acid on screen. And at just the right moment, a real skeleton appeared in that sold out theater of 14 year old kids and flew over the audience. Pure cinema anarchy ensued. We had just experienced a Merjo, Castle's newest gimmick for his latest horror flick, starring the incomparable Vincent Price. This is the exact moment I knew I would end up in show business. Fear causes tremendous tensions in the body. If you can't relieve those tensions, why can't they become strong enough to kill you? I'll never forget the scene in The Tingler when he says, Ladies and gentlemen, please do not panic, but scream, scream for your lives. It's here, it's over here. The Tingler crosses the movie screen and then you see the pitiful thing on the floor and the string pulling it. That shot made me like the movie even more. The crazy cheesiness of it all. Yet Vincent Price is so serious, he doesn't wink at the audience and say, this is beneath us because it was never beneath us. It elevated us. And to this day, I do believe we all have a tinkler. The projection booth, quick. Go ahead, scream right now. I promise you, you'll feel better. <laughs> Even in sillier movies, Vincent Price was not campy. Campy suggests somebody who's so bad they're good. Vincent Price was so great that he was perfect. That faux British accent that would have been so offensive and affected on other actors was endearing. Sounds of any degree whatsoever inspire me with terror. The grating of the door bolt was like a sword stroke to my ears. Just hearing his character describing the sounds of rat claws. I can hear the scratch of rat claws within the stone. Oh, what a great line. I can't imagine these movies without Vincent Price in them. He was just a fine actor, never pretentious. The audiences that went to see him were all inclusive, from the poorest people to the richest. Nobody disliked him. Vincent Price was classless, even though he was classy. An exaggerated gentleman. He gave Upscale a good name, and he was always handsome. Dignified, charming, and a little bit sinister. 
When Vincent Price was a ham, he was in on the joke. He celebrated the ridiculousness of horror, and he could completely hold his own. Even in The Raven, he wasn't upstaged by the likes of Peter Lorre, Boris Karloff, Jack Nicholson, or a talking bird. I have it. You are under an enchantment. Took you long enough to find that out. He levitates in one scene, and as a kid, I pretended I was levitating too. It made me so happy. I always thought that Vincent Price was my friend. <laughs> Actually, I still do. For Turner Classic Movies, I'm John Waters. Star of the Month, Vincent Price. Thursdays this month on Turner Classic Movies.